external dynamic lists and how they work within the Palo firewall and how to configure an external dynamic list service in Cortex XOR. Um, this was done previously and you can of course still get my meld um, but XOR makes it so much easier. Okay so first let's have a look at indicators. Let's come down to here. So these are the indicators we have. Um, these are drawn from the integrations, the alien vault uh, reputation feed. We have others as well. Um, so we can look at expired ones. Expired, and those are all the ones that are showing as being expired. Um, there's 46,000 of them. Um, and obviously the one we're interested in is active. So this is so this is the alien vault reputation feed. So active means it's an active indicator and something K. Okay. So the integration is here. I'm also getting from uh, virus total and spam house as well. Feeds from them which will show up in there but they don't show up as part of that search. Okay. So go to alien vault. You can see our feed here when it last pulled the indicators. So it last pulled a hundred indicators, which you can see from there, at 9.37. It's configured alien vault reputation feed, fetches indicators. If you were to click this it would stop fetching indicators as it is it's working the indicator reputation is bad it's the default setting for alien vault because its indicators are compromised source reliability be usually reliable the jury's still out on that essentially um, and there I go with essentially uh, so basically uh, some people say C um, for fairly reliable, uh, I believe it's fairly reliable, yeah, C, fair, fairly reliable, but I, I think it's usually reliable. Uh, the traffic light protocol colour, red. So indicator expiration method, in here we've got uh, the indicator type, time interval, never expire when removed from the feed. Now when it pulls it, it will pull the ones, the 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 active ones it pulls from the feed, the ones that are still in the database that aren't matched against the active ones it's pulled, it regards them as being removed from the feed and therefore it expires the indicator then. Okay, so that's that one. And again, uh, this is one that's pulled 100 indicators. Um, pretty much the same thing here. Indicator reputation, go for none bad again because it is bad that was from some testing earlier um, sorry and we have the fetch interval every 10 minutes uh, and all the same basically the same the same uh, configuration there these are all uh, these are all automatically populated uh, when you when you first set up the the feed uh, the, that's it really that's so that's the one so In order to check that our um, our feed is working, if we go back to the alien vault and we look in here, it's got the alien vault reputation feed, okay, and we know that it's pulling IPs into there, but how do we get that then from there into our firewall? We can use rather unfortunate naming the EDL service. Now, if you remember the old mine, the old mine meld. If you remember mine meld, mine meld basically created a URL that the firewall could look up against to pull the uh, the IPs down from. There is 
one thing I'll go into on this there's a difference between HTTP and HTTPS okay so if we call this bad IPs okay that is case sensitive uh, there is no classifier and there is no instant type for this you hit that we can have a classifier but there's no point because it's it's literally just creating a service now the indicator query going to run against the indicators to pull the feed so in this particular instance what we want to do is expiration status active because we want active ones type is an IP list because we want IPs reputation bad okay now to make sure we don't pull it from places at the minute that's all I've got configured but to make sure we don't pull it from places that we don't want to so if we've got a really unreliable source that is actually it's still valuable to us to have in Cortex we wouldn't want certain IPs put into the firewall if the source wasn't that reliable so going to go for aggregated reliability now I'm actually going to put that in properly so these are logical operators so, and aggregated reliability and here you can see we've got the drop down of completely reliable third party enrichment that's moving further into playbooks and enriched um, indicators we'll go for usually reliable in this particular instance okay search for that and we have our new list and this is our list that would appear sorry in our EDL feed okay so source brand alien vault reputation feed expiration status active expiration so that's when it's going to expire naturally and then geo country if we want to add more or less uh, fields to this we just click the little gear icon and come on here we can also move these up and down so if we want to grab that move it up to there we can do save and there we go we can we can arrange this whatever way we want okay now here we can also create an incident so if we wanted to do that we can create an incident based on that so it's a hunting incident so then we can go and we can run a playbook against that um, and you should do more more enrichment and, and everything but we'll get into that at a later time so going back to our EDL service come to here Cortex bad IPs this is case sensitive and you'll see where that comes in later paste our copied indicator query in there EDL size is maximum number of items update EDL on demand only well, there's no point having um, a dynamic list if you're going to update it on demand only listen pool okay so this is where we get a difference so if we just want to use HTTP to reach our feed then we use this pool if we want to use HTTPS then we can we just use the um, the URL not so uh, then we can test that and then click done and that's fine okay now if one was to go to uh, let's go to settings I just need to point this out as well troubleshooting down here we have the global server configuration okay so you've got HTTP proxy that it needs to use HTTPS proxy that it uses to get out or anything like that the base URL but the one thing you do need is you need to put this in um, into your server configuration because that allows the external service to run Okay, so that is literally add server configuration. You'll get a key and a value, and the key in this particular instance is instance.execute.external. 
and true. Okay. Right. So coming back here. So if we now go to and I've done this. Instance execute and then call to expand IP is what you've seen it there, and then we can see we've got the list. Now this is the list that the firewall is going to pull. Okay, so that's working fine. On the firewall, it's objects, external dynamic lists. I'm going to call this Cortex Threat Feed. It's an IP list, as we know, and this is going to be. Um, Alien Vault Alien Vault uh, Rep Feed and also Spam House because that is in there. That's you know um, included in there because it's pulling both from both both instances. Okay, put that in there. That knows it's going to do it. Test the source URL, so it knows it's going to go to it. Okay, and what we'll notice here as well at the minute, there's no list entries and exceptions. Okay, so if we go back to it, it's just 000032 because it's not pulled in. The reason it's not pulled in is because it's not referenced in a policy. So I'm going to go to my policies. I'm going to go to dropped badness. Add it in there. Okay. Click commit. Now that has been uh, committed, you can see that's in there. If we go back to our objects external dynamic lists, we can see now that that has been populated with the list of IPs that we had from our feed here.